So here we are, folks, with Rise Calendar, and it is a calendar application. It's called Calendar First Project Management, and it has task management and projects alongside it. It's a bit of a strange mix, and um, I guess they're constantly refining their product. But today, we're going to be giving you a review to see whether it's suitable for you. Now, as a calendar application, it's pretty decent, so we're going to overview everything you need to know. Now, before we begin, if you're interested in finding calendar apps, you can jump over to Toolfinder. You can also find a, a list of the ranked calendars and a buyer's guide to calendars, which you'll find linked below. Both of those will be in the description below and the comments, so you won't be able to miss it. So this right here is Rise Calendar. And first and foremost, you want to be able to use this for the calendar experience first, because it's pretty decent. So this is what you get. It's available on a wide range of devices and the pricing is really reasonable. Right now it's free for personal users. And if you do want to upgrade to the tasks and projects uh, in terms of like uh, team access, it's $10 per month, which again is seemingly in line with some of the other options, but you don't need this if you're using it yourself. So I want to start with the settings because you can add multiple calendars. Now, what's great about this is you can connect Outlook and more Google calendars. I've got two connected and this is perfect because you can set things up and get going. Some of these calendar apps in the free experience actually limit you based on how many calendars you add. Some limit you just to one. So this is a great addition to get started from. Now, the other aspect I want to show you is this feature called Focus Guard. So for example, if I automatically block time in the morning when I have over 16 hours of less focus time per week. And this is a great feature to protect your time. So I really like this and it's a good offering. Um, it basically like makes sure your calendar isn't blocked um, by putting in busy time so that when you work. Now here is a little bit of broken down element of the pricing. And you can see here, if I had um, personal workspace here, you can see that I can add as many tasks as I want. But as I'm using this as a workspace here for keepproductive.com, which is toolfinder.co, you can see it's free. So I get unlimited everything pretty much. Um, but obviously the tasks that I have as part of the Keep Productive workspace, I'm limited to 100. So that's one of the things to note. But obviously in my personal account, if I allocate tasks in my personal account, it's unlimited. So the upgrade is 10 euros per month. Um, so I'll put the conversion to UK or US on the site. So let's go back to this experience. And first and foremost, this is fast. I've used a lot of calendar apps, um, <laughs> probably a bit of a problem actually here. Um, but adding an event is really, really fast. It's available on iOS and Android too. You can see you can add an event, you can add participants, and you can repeat, you can add you can add a custom link as well. There's no limitations to what you can add. You've got Google Meet and add Zoom as well. And you can add notes down here. But I want to show you a cool feature. Down here, there's a feature called reschedule. So if you're in any event or you're in and creating an event and you're like, ah, I need to do it before Thursday. So what it would do is it will try and find a suitable time for you to do it based on all of the attributes that you've brought together. And this is really nice because then I can hit save and I can have the event added here. So that's a really nice feature if you're some someone that, uh, for example, here, I actually don't need to go to the gym anymore because I did one today. So maybe I could say it's got to be after uh, Thursday because I might be knackered and it's going to give me a recommended time there. So it's moved it to 8.30. Obviously, it doesn't. it's not smart enough to know whether it's got that, but obviously, just to give you sort of a worked example. Now up here, you can manage what your view looks like. To be honest, the views are not incredible. Like there's some good options, but probably could be made better. Um, I like the four day view. It's typically the one I go with. And up here, you can schedule a meeting. Um, so for example, if you want to share a specific time or add a scheduling link, you can. And sharing options, it actually automatically populates a few options, but you can use a single use one or you can create this for longer. And there are loads of hotkeys on this, so you can just press um, schedule. And you can see here as well, I've got one 30-minute meeting set up with, um, with a scheduling link to ready. So you can go into settings and modify this. And this is for one-to-one, -one, but you can also organize a collective uh, multiple hosts to one invitee. And you can ignore the focus uh, blocker as well. So this is good. This is really good because some of these applications actually limit you to fixed base scheduling links, which is something you get here. 
And if you do have team members, you can use this feature on the right hand side to find a suitable slot to have a 45 minute meeting. And then it will automatically start working on those calendar items with you. So I've talked a little bit about the calendar, well, a lot about the calendar, I haven't stopped talking about the calendar, um, but there is other task management and project management abilities in here. But before then, I wanna show you the micro focus view. This is probably my favorite feature of the entire experience. You can go ahead and add a task, like for example, uh, film rise calendar review. And obviously this is private to me, I'm gonna press enter save. And what's nice is here, I get the time, I get the afternoon, and then you can see the task that needs to be done. And it pops up here, but I can drag it down and time block. I love this feature. It's really nice for focusing on what you need to do for the day. It's quite minimal. And here you can add priority levels as well to indicate a, a focus for the day. You can see any show completed or, or show subtasks. So if I click into this task, I can add it to a project, I can add it to a subtask, and I can add labels as well, which is quite helpful. So you can see this is part of my personal workspace. So obviously I can do things like mark um, the blocking of time. And you're not seeing this, but on the Mac menu bar, it's actually coming up as an option, which is great. So if I delete this, it'll show, obviously it will show my calendar, but I just want to show you that feature because it's really, really nice for managing uh, meetings. There's also an inbox if you have something across your day that you want to capture quickly, you can add it there. Now, as I mentioned, the, I would say the calendar management aspects of this application is so much better than task management, but it's good to have this. And they're probably evolving this in the background quite a lot. But as you can see, I've got a personal workspace here. Anything I believe that's not added to a project, ah, there you go. So if I set a project, um, let's just put it as test. Um, yeah, so you can't really have projects as part of your account. So for example, in this case, if I add a new project, it will be part of, oh, there we go. Actually, I didn't know that. So if I put a test ABC, okay, so perfect. I can add a personal workspace project. I thought that was a limitation there, but actually that's really good news because that won't, any tasks that are part of that project won't contribute to my task amount, which is 100, which I have as part of keepproductive.com. So that's really good news. You can set a priority up here. And it's like the user interface is really, really nice. So what you can do as well in the task view is you can actually go up here and add it as a board view or a timeline view. Timeline view is great for projects, but primarily you can set things like the priority levels in here and add attributes that show up um, as part of it. So if you don't want certain things showing, that can be quite helpful. Timeline view is very much uh, more of a visual experience. You can start to hover over our stuff and even set things up like the, whether it's part of the status that it's in right now, you can see a month version of this to zoom out more and so on and so forth. It's pretty much a Gantt chart. You can do filtering up in the top left-hand corner, which will help you to break it down per project as well, as well as what's urgent too. So obviously Gantt view is quite nice. It's actually a pretty decent offering because sometimes timeline view isn't available inside of these applications, but it is and does it quite well here. So let's show you the projects, and projects are really similar. They're basically just folders for your tasks, and you can see them as part of an organized structure. Now, all of these areas, when I was testing it, worked really well. Um, I didn't have a problem with adding tasks or managing them in a system. Like, I quite liked it. And actually, one of the things that found beneficial is go to the calendar view. You can see overdue tasks on this left-hand side. So you can click into them, you can even drag them into your system as well. You can even drag projects into your system too uh, that will tasks that are part of projects as well. So it's really easy to start doing that. And you can even add uh, things like um, uh, filed, uh, files and attachments to it as well. So before we round this all off, there's a few things that I wanna point out because there are some additional abilities that I think are helpful. Up here, you've got updates, which will basically give you an outline of what's been updated as part of your team. You've also got um, the ability in the calendar view to, uh, well, inside a task view to subscribe to a certain thread of tasks as well. And also um, you can delete them if you do want to, but I like this marked and blocked by, so you can actually assist um, certain tasks. For example, you can set ones, like a current task is waiting on this, and that's good to see as part of the experience. Now, in terms of the settings, I think there's a few things that you can really customize. All of the regular customization stuff you'd expect, but there's also smart color coding as well. So for example, if you have one-to-one -one meetings or team syncs or external attendees, 
these are automated and it's really helpful for just being able to switch these on and know at a glance what they look like. You can even do the same with tasks as well. For example, if you want your tasks as pink, you can have them there. You can switch on calendars if you want to, and you can connect up Slack as well. Now, I like this feature called working hours, which is great. So it limits you to what structures and limitations that you do have, and you can create additional workspaces down here. Now, in the workspaces area, you can actually narrow things down to customize a bit of the elements of it, more like an admin panel for those people. But I love the combination of features in here with um, time blocking and systems like that. I think they work very well and something that I think you'll benefit if you're more calendar focused with tasks. Now, in terms of the future of this application, it's a difficult one to say because they're sort of just evolving into the tasks and project management area. But as a whole, the calendar experience is one of the best I've seen on the market. And it presents itself with a set of applications that are going to be good from day one. So as a calendar experience, I give it an A+. As a task and project experience, I probably give it a B with a growing uh, sense of feeling. I love this feature. This is one of my favorite features of, of the whole experience. And it's worth considering as an option for your calendar right now. And obviously, you can expand it out if you're interested in the other elements. So hopefully that was helpful, giving you an idea of whether Rise Calendar is right for you. As per normal, check out our reviews over on toolfinder.co, as well as details like pricing, insights, and more. And if you're interested, there are a bunch of more calendar tools. And if you want to skip and find a list of the best calendar apps on the market, we'll help you there as well. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.